In the start of 2019, I was thinking of projects that I would like to do during that year. And I came up with an idea that I then started actively working on in the start of July. I wanted to create an art supply set, which included all of my favorite art supplies that I use in my daily work and to have it available as a complete curated package in my online shop. I launched the first batch of the art supply boxes last December, and after that I've made a new batch available every three months or so, so that I can keep up with the orders and make more sets. You can see the next launch date in the description box below. So in this video I'm going to show you all of my personal favorite tools for creating paintings with colored inks. All of these supplies are also included in the art supply box. I'll leave a link below to my shop, so please go check it out if you'd like. And if you do end up getting the set or something else, thank you so very much for the support. On social media, people often ask what art supplies I use. So I'm going to go into detail on every piece of supply that I use in my daily work. And when asked, I'm going to refer to this video in the future. I have also listed all the supplies in the description box below, so you can check them out easily there. I first tried experimenting with colored inks three years ago during the Inktober challenge. I had been using watercolors before that for many years, and colored inks felt like a pretty similar medium to me. The inks that I now use in my work are Ruva and Klinga colored inks. These colored inks are soluble with water, and they mix very well with each other. They are very vibrant, and they are translucent, just like watercolors. The difference with colored inks and watercolors is that when colored inks dry on the paper, they are waterproof, so there is no way of lifting them from the paper once they are dry. In that way, colored inks are a bit more difficult medium compared to watercolors as they are not as forgiving as watercolor. With watercolor, you can pretty easily lift the paint from the paper if you end up making a mistake. On the other hand, with colored ink, you can work from dark to light tones, unlike in watercolor, where it is better to work from light to dark, because otherwise you might end up having dark areas bleeding into your light colors. I also find it easier to make shadows and color layering with colored ink, because the layers that you paint on top won't lift the dry color underneath. Inside the art supply box, there is a selection of seven colored inks. The bottles have a handy pipette to dispense just enough ink. The color selection that I have chosen allows for mixing of a variety of different colors. I recommend using a porcelain palette or just a regular plate as a mixing surface. I use poster color for corrections and finishing touches. It can also be mixed with colored ink to make a pale tone of opaque color. This brand is used by some animation studios in Japan to make background paintings for their animations. Recently I have also been exploring making art with just poster color as a medium. Saunders Waterford watercolor paper is my favorite for creating ink paintings. It is very absorbent, but also handles brush pen line work very well. Because it is made from 100% cotton, you can make multiple layers with ink and water on it. The sheets in the block are glued together from the sides so you don't have to stretch the paper if you paint on the top sheet. I usually remove my sheets from the block with a basic kitchen knife. I sometimes also use the hot press variety, which is smoother in texture and not as absorbent. The Neo Pico Deleter sketchbook is my favorite for everyday sketching. The paper in the sketchbook is lightly textured, which is great for sketching with ballpoint pen or a pen. I usually prefer drawing in landscape format rather than portrait, but thanks to the spiral bound spine, it is easy to draw horizontally or vertically on the paper. I use the pencil pocket brush pen for all of my black line art. It's an amazingly versatile tool for creating thick and thin outlines and to fill wide areas with black. The ink in this pen is waterproof once it's dry, so when working with watercolor paper, 
I usually let it dry from 30 minutes to an hour before putting color on top, so that it won't smudge. I use synthetic watercolor brushes almost exclusively in my work. These ones that Holbein make are definitely my favorite so far. The brush sizes that I use most often are 0 and 4. 4 is great for overall use and 0 for very fine details. I especially like the handle in these brushes because unlike typical brushes with wooden handles that get damaged over time with moisture, these won't have that same issue. The back end of the handle can be also used to scrape off dry masking fluid. The Neo Pigo Liner from Deleter is an all-around good pen for sketching or doing line art. This pen is also great if you like the look of uniform line work without varying line weight. The Pilot High Tech is one of my favorite tools for freehand sketching. The nib is really fine and the ink flows nicely onto the paper. It's great when you are sketching with quick strokes, as the nib can keep up with your pace very easily. These days I do all of my sketches with ballpoint pen without ever erasing. This method helped me not to focus on mistakes and to streamline my sketching process. When I have a final sketch ready for a painting, I use these colored pencils to trace it out onto the watercolor paper. My favorite colored pencils are the Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils. When they are used lightly on top of watercolor paper, you can't notice the sketches from underneath the paint you lay on top. I try to use the same color of colored pencil as the color that I will use to paint on top of that area, for most discrete results. The Pentel Aquash water brush is very handy in multiple ways. I use it often when I'm on the go. The brush has a water container in it, so I don't have to carry a mug or such to fill with water. If I want my illustration to have colored outline, I fill the water brush with colored ink and use it like a brush pen to make a colored outline for the artwork. The Mono Eraser is an all-around good eraser for erasing pencil lines. And the Four Color Eraser is exceedingly good for erasing colored pencil sketches from watercolor paper. This masking fluid from Maskepen can be used to mask areas of the painting that you want to protect from paint. I usually use it to mask off areas when I intend to make big washes with paint so I do not always have to go around the objects that are inside that area. Maskepen comes with a handy nib, so the fluid can be easily applied to the preferred area. The cap has a little needle that keeps the masking fluid from drying and clogging the applicator. You need to let the masking fluid dry completely before laying ink or water on top of it. Remember to also remove the masking fluid during the same day. Some masking fluid varieties might get stuck in the paper if left for too long. Masking fluid can also be applied on top of painted area, but when removed, it might lift some ink off the paper. This pencil case by Private Case is made from 100% recycled cardboard. It has my black cat emblem embossed on top. It can fit a selection of my favorite tools, such as pens, pencils, or even brushes, so I can take them on the go with me. So these are all the tools that I use most often in my paintings, and every one of these items are included in the Heikala Art Supply Box. The Art Supply Box is a project that is very dear to me, and I'm all open for any feedback on how to improve on this concept. I'm hoping to do more projects like this in the future and probably offer different kind of sets and art materials for you to try out and get inspired by. Let me know if you have any ideas, I would love to hear them. Thank you so much for watching this video and thank you so much for supporting me making more art.